okay so last uh, video what i talked about is basically binary solution and the binary solution consists of solids and so solutes and solvents now this can be uh, a gaseous solution a liquid solution and a solid solution and the corresponding gaseous solution the solvent is gas the corresponding liquid solution the solvent is liquid and solid is your solvent is solid so you have different case different solutes and these are the different examples what we talked about okay now let's say if now the challenging part in particular this uh, in case this solution is basically the determination of the concentration of the solvent okay so in this video lecture what we will talk about the different method of determining the concentration of solvent or there is another thing also which is known as calculation of the strength of the solution okay so let's move into that okay now Strength. Strength means this is the amount. I would say the amount of solute in solvent. Right. This is the thing. Amount of solute in the solvent. Hmm? Okay. Now this. Amount you can measure, you can amount. This can be in terms of mass. If you have a solid particle, in terms of mass, m. In terms of volume, in terms of volume, you can measure. Think of, or in terms of, I would say if you know the molecular weight, then. Moles, which is n, which can be measured. Okay, solvent. It it also can be mass. Mass. It also can be volume. Okay, and it also can be a mole. Number of moles n. Now, particularly now, next question arises that when we will use this thing. Okay, acha. So, to determine this m, v, and n, this amount of solute in that particular given amount of solvent, you require to you require some calculation. Okay, acha. So first, you think. See, think in this way. One. Okay. First. You think that if I take the two masses, we if I think that the kind of this way is in hundred grams or let's say in x grams of solvent, the y grams of solute is dissolved. Okay, if I think in this way, x gram of solvent, y gram of Solute is dissolved. Okay, dissolved. I made the statement. Hmm. And obviously, definitely, your x will be greater than y because x is the amount of solvent and y is the amount of the solute. Obviously, x will be greater than y. Now, let if I do this, say this. Okay, then. Now next question arises. Okay, the next question arises that what is the percentage of Y in the solvent? Okay, what is the percentage of Y in the solvent? So if I say now here that the total mass of solvent, what is the total mass of the solvent now? Sorry. 
I'm sorry, I'm extremely sorry, not solvent, solution. Solution is x plus y. Okay, now, so hence the percentage of solvent is basically nothing but, I'm sorry, about solute. Basically, okay, percentage of solute is basically, excuse me, okay, the percentage of solute is basically your y by x plus y multiplied by 100 percent. Right? Now, this percent, now what we have determined here? This is also mass. This is also mass. Total mass. Right? So, this is our calculation. Way of calculation is very primary. Calculation is mass percentage. Okay? So, this is weight by weight percent. Mass percent. Number one. This is one of the way you can determine the amount, percentage amount of the solute, so solute in the solvent. This is very trivial. Hmm? Very trivial. Okay. Now, case number two. If I say, okay. Let's say, if I say that, okay, one thing I want to mention here, when I say mass percentage, that means in your 100 grams of the solution, how much solute is present? Let me be clear. Hmm? In hundred, let's say if someone says that the sodium chloride has the mass, the pass, mass percentage of sodium chloride is 23%. Okay, in let's say in water, in water, let's say. Uh, let's say an example will be clear. Let's say someone is saying 23 percentage, okay, mass of NaCl in water. If someone says this, what is the significance? What is the meaning of this? The meaning of this is that in 100 grams of water, 23 grams of sodium chloride is dissolved. Here, 100 grams of water, 23 grams of sodium chloride is dissolved. Hmm? Okay. Another case. Instead of mass, if I take volume, okay, that's also possible. Case number two. Let's say I'm telling that V1 ml of solvent and V2 ml of solute mixed. Obviously, your V1 will be greater than V2. Right? You encounter this in case of when you determine that V1 S1, V2 S2 problem. Hmm? Okay. So, the total volume total volume is v1 plus v2 okay so percentage of solute is basically your v1 i'm sorry v2 divided by v1 plus v2 multiplied by 100 100 now this is called volume percent volume percentage okay. so v by v percent volume percent okay. okay see now if i say that so what is the significance what is the significance here the significance is let's say you can say in this way that 
थर्टी एम एल ऑफ इथानॉल इज डिजर्व इफ एफ इथानॉल से थर्टी परसेंट वॉल्यूम परसेंट ऑफ इथानॉल वॉल्यूम परसेंट ऑफ इथानॉल थर्टी परसेंट दैट मीन्स वॉट थर्टी एम एल ऑफ इथानॉल इज डिजर्व इन हंड्रेड एम एल ऑफ वॉटर क्लियर ओके सो नाउ सो नाउ वॉल्यूम वॉल्यूम इज गॉन ओके सो I'm just uh, taking out this part. Excuse me. Hmm. Out this part. Okay. Now volume, volume is gone. So mass, mass is gone. Volume, volume is gone. So mass, volume can happen. Mass, mass, volume can happen. Now, mass, volume. When we are taking, always think the volume will be for the solvent. And mass will be for the solution. Hmm? Okay. Acha. So number three. Number three. Let's say m gram of solute <laughs> dissolved in g ml of M grams of solute dissolved in V ml of solvent. Okay. Okay. So V ml of solvent. Now the total volume of the solution. See, mass is there and V ml is there. So the total volume of the solu uh, the solution will be nothing but this. The volume of the solvent, right? So the percentage of solute is mass by volume. Hundred. That means in hundred ml of the solution, what is the percentage of solute present? Hmm. And this is known as mass. By volume percentage. Now I want to mention one thing here that this is a very incorrect way of representation a solid and a liquid mixture because the reason is that because this volume. Okay, when we can do this? When we can do this? When your one kg. Will be equal to one liter. The particular solvent. That's why we only apply this for water. Okay, when one kg will be equal to one water, near equal to. But in maximum cases, okay. See, one kg will be equal to one liter. That means your density has to be near to one. Clear? Because mass, I'm trying mass, is basically your volume into density. Okay, ha, huh, right. Volume into density. So if this is almost one, if this is, let's say your uh, this is one kg, and this is your one your uh, ml. Okay, one liter. Sorry, one liter. So one kg liter liter. If this is one liter, then the density will be one kg per liter. Then you can say, okay, this can we can applicable. That's why maximum cases for water, this is fine. Until and what if your solution is water, you can use this one. But when your solvent is very different, let's say any organic solvent which has a particular density, okay, a fixed density, then your mass and volume cannot be equal, means equivalent. Okay, in that case you cannot use this thing. That's why the molarity, normality things come later. Okay. Because when this mass per the mass by volume percentage fails, then your molarity normality concept comes, hmm? and that you can apply for any solvent solutions. Okay, acha. So this is so. But for knowledge, you just just try to learn this part. Okay, acha. Next. Okay, next part hmm? is your fourth number four. Okay, so we talked about mass, we talked about volume, we talked about mass volumes. 
but we still have haven't talked about moles moles if we talk about moles now okay okay so mole means when we talk about say moles acha what is moles <laughs> let's see if i say x n1 moles of solute and n2 moles of solvent if i say excuse me if i say n1 moles of solute and n2 moles of solvent so total moles what is the total mole total mole is my n1 plus n2 this is clear okay but when we say total mole hmm this total mole okay the moles is always dependent on the corresponding molecular weight of the corresponding element because n is nothing but small m which is the mass mass and m so if we think in terms of mass that mass by mass percentage okay in that case your molecular weight also comes in that term if we incorporate that part here but when we say moles it's a completely different concept first of all moles does not have any unit okay acha so when we are saying total mole that is m1 plus m2 hmm. okay so moles percent moles percent is basically same way your n1 by n1 n1 plus n2 and this is percentage in so multiplied by 100 this is percent you know what this term is called this term is called basically your mole fraction mole fraction and it is denoted by x since and it is the mole fraction of which component component of the solute n1 so we will denote it as a x1 okay so mole fraction acha now this mole fraction so what is the significance very important okay it represents that the moles of the solute present in one mole of the solution one mole of the solution why because definition if i say by definition x1 is basically what n1 by n1 plus n2 okay if i say your x component number 2 x2 so n2 by n1 plus n2 so if i will say your x1 plus x2 is basically what n1 plus n2 divided by n1 plus n2 so this is nothing but the one so x1 plus x2 is basically equal to 1 so here is the interesting thing that's why it's very easy to handle because if you add up you will get one this is a mole fraction if you add up for a solution you will get one hmm. and mole fraction is a unitless quantity isn't it fraction is a unitless quantity hmm. okay uh, one thing i just sorry i just made it wrong it says just so if this is gram unit in gram and molecular weight is in gram mole inverse so unit is Okay. Okay. So, but your actually I was just here talking about mole fraction. I think it's sorry. Mole fraction is x one, and that is a unitless quantity. And for two components, okay, this is a total solution, but component is two. Two components individually have mole fraction x one and x two, and if you add it up, you will get to one. See, that's why if you know the mole fraction of one component. It is very easy to determine the mole fraction of another I means other component also. Okay, now what happens for the components? 
uh, if you have in a solution more than one component more than one component if you have more than one component if you have in that case what i can do in that case let's say if this x1 x2 x3 dot 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 xn xn okay so what i can write x1 plus x2 plus x3 dot 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 plus xn equal to 1 so it implies that summation over x i i varies from 1 to n is equal to 1 okay so for more than one component you can easily this way we can handle the mole fraction problem hmm? okay now this mole now this mole volume masses okay these are the key components of determining a concentration okay concentration or i would say strength is the correct word okay. so um, let's say if i take an again this combination this combination how if i am taking see if you know if you uh, if you catch this com the way i will tell now if you catch this combination now you will never forget the molarity normality and molarity hmm? okay listen very carefully okay case one each case is number one and i will take moles moles of the solute and volume of the solvent i will take i will take moles of solute plus volume of solvent if i take this combination okay if i take this 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 combination hmm. now if you have let's say n moles of solute and volume is v so what you have the ratio n by v and volume of the solvent is basically volume of the solution hmm. okay so this is nothing but your n by v right okay now this n by v if i write in such a way this n okay this is this n in such a way okay that this is the number of moles of solute divided by volume in 1 liter solvent 1 liter solution that means this is this term now is basically one molarity molarity so but so what is the thing so one if i write in unitary method how will i encounter the problem 1000 ml one molar will be equal to the molecular weight 1000 ml 1 molar will be equal to its molecular weight right hmm? this is the molarity okay now how the molecular weight is coming because the molecular weight molecular weight okay and number of moles are connected here but when you determine the molarity okay 
you have to use this way. 1000 ml fun molar is molecular weight. Okay, so what is molarity basically? Molarity nothing but the number of moles of the solute per liter. You know, that means if I say, example, 0 0.5 molar HCl, what is this thing? Different determinants. This says that HCl, HCl, it's a solution. If I say, if I solution, so what is defined? It defines that 0 0.5 moles of HCl in 1000 ml water. Okay. 1000 ml. So if I want to calculate in a way, so what do you say? 1000 ml 0 0.5 molar HCl solution. 0 0.5 moles in 1000 ml water or 1000 1 liter. 1 liter. Okay. So this is the molarity. Now case number 2. If I talk about it. Okay. What I talked about here, the moles of the solute divided by volume. That means I am taking moles with a volume combination. Now, if I take moles with a mass combination, if I take this. So, what is this? If I take moles of solute, that is N plus mass, mass of solvent if i take this combination then what will have what can happen hmm? then what can happen so this is basically n by m hmm? so this is number of mole of Solute divided by mass of I would say now solution in one kilogram. Okay, yeah. in one kilogram, in kilogram, better kilo one kilogram one because eight. now this term will be is known as one molar. Lity, molality or denoted by a small m okay small m, one molality very carefully think think about this so for molarity what we're taking moles by volume for molality we are taking moles by your mass okay Acha. that means molality what is the unit Unit is basically moles per kg. This is moles per liter and this is moles per kg. Hmm? Just him, very simple, very simple, very trivial. Hmm. Acha. So, what it represents then? So, in 1000 grams of the solvent, okay, one molal is basically nothing but the molecular weight. Molecular weight similarly. So, if I take example that 0 0.05 molal, okay, molal, 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 okay, uh, ethanol in water. So, what is the meaning of this? Significance of this? The significance of this is 0 0.05 mole of ethanol in 1 kg water clear okay clear so this is the concept of the molarity and the molality hmm? okay now 
before finishing this uh, strain calculation i want to mention another impact, another important thing that is okay um okay i'm rubbing here it's not required anymore okay concept number 3 concept number 3 okay now let's say i'm taking down here volume volume in 1 liter i'm taking in above here i'm taking what number of moles number of moles Now, instead of number of moles there are okay when we talk see that number of moles is equivalent to the molecular weight true but in some cases the true molecular weight is not there okay true means i would say uh, there is a concept actually the true molecular weight is not used in while making means why they are mixed in the solution okay like few cases where if i take the oxalic acid if i give you the oxalic acid c double o h c double o h and two water this is the crystalline way of oxalic acid okay now if you calculate the molecular weight m the molecular weight is m then effectively in solution in solution the concentration of solution is basically is used is m by 2 okay why 2 because these two comes from it has two ionizable hydrogen hydrogen atom now so that means the one mole of this substance will behave in the way if i take the mono means mono this one and this one will behave in a same way but the for the but the thing is here is that these two this two means these, this is the di ionized ionized state okay now these ionized state will be uh, the the ions ionized state the means the concentration will be used in the solution is equal to the molecular weight divided by 2 equals to now this term is known as the equivalent weight now let me define another way equivalent how equivalent weight is basically let's say if you have you have a balance balance huh? you heard about that uh, that in the shops you have thing balance huh? balance now in this balance so what you have here in one in one balance here and one balance plate here hmm? now here is your that the your uh, pointer now what we do here we put here our substance and here put our uh, measurement measured okay. now let's say when we are determining the equivalent weight of a particular substance i am putting that substance f here and here i am putting what hydrogen 12c this kind of thing hmm. so and we are trying to balance them okay now that equivalent how much equivalent to the standard basically is nothing but is known as the equivalent weight and that equivalent weight is determined by the your this amount of hydrogen and carbon whatever you put equivalently there okay now instead of using here number of moles if i use the equivalent weight okay anyways these two is called valency factor valency factor and this valency factor is i would say and people say that this is defined by particularly m by z the equivalent weight is defined by m by z okay z is a valency factor and this valency factor for different kind of substances for different acids this valency factor is different for uh redox chemicals the valency factor is different so different elements will have different valency factors okay so i would consult uh, say that you should look to into my in the equivalent i just give it here the brief eh? the more details uh, let me i will soon upload a 
by a concept of equivalent weight that is an important thing you should learn okay so you go through that video also and the everything will be clear okay so as far as this part is concerned you just think that the equivalent weight is basically mass divided by the z which is the balance of the okay so if i use instead of this moles of the solute if i use in this case here number of equivalent number of equivalents so what will happen so in this case the this is this term is known as the normality normality defined by n n so volume in one liter means so i would say the 1000 ml one normal solution will be equivalent to the equivalent weight. Equivalent weight. Now, for HCl, if your Z factor is 1, for Z factor is 1, which is in case of HCl, let's say HCl because it has a monoproton, it has a single proton, that's why the Z factor is 1. So, for HCl, your the normality. Will be equal to molarity. Okay, so normality will be equal to the molarity. And this event for oxalic acid, the normality will be two times of molarity because the Z factor is two. So if you write the normality molarity multiplied by Z, this is the general. Now, if I say that, uh, okay, I'm wrapping all this part. I'm wrapping all this part. Now, let's think in this way. If you have a solution, okay, volume of V1 and strength is N1. Now, this strength can be normality, this strength can be molarity. Okay, actually I would write S. S. Okay. And this solution you have diluted to volume V2. Diluted to V2 volume. Okay. So what will be the final strength? What will be the final strength? The final strength, since that it is very means equivalent throughout the solution, so the final strength which is S2 will be nothing but your V1S1 by V2 or what we can write V1S1 is equal to V2S2. Now this is known as the dilution law. Known as the dilution law. Hmm? Okay. So, from so till this video, what we have discussed so far, we have discussed that how to define the strength of the solutions. We have just said about the normality, we have said about the molarity, we have said about the molality, mass percentage, volume percentage, mass to mass. Means basically nothing but this you also can do. Okay, it's very easy. What are the factors that determine the strength of the solution? Mass, volume, and moles. I will I have just taken all the combinations. What kind of combinations? If you have number of mass with mass, that is mass percentage, volume with volume, volume percentage, mass with volume, mass by volume percentage. Here. Now let's come to the moles. If you have moles by moles, that is a mole fraction. Next, if you have moles by volume, that is molarity. If you have moles by mass, that is molality and if you are known and number of equivalent that is a different concept equivalent by volume you have normality okay so these all the combinations you can think about it okay so next video what i will talk about the next part which is the uh, when you have a particular solvent okay particular uh, so, so, solution or a liquid 
clear solution are in a liquid okay which is volatile in nature we'll talk about the more about characteristics volatile in nature and due to the volatility what will happen it will at normal temperature it will tend to evaporate hmm. and that evaporation leads to a some vapor phase around it and that vapor phase gives a pressure that's we know as a vapor pressure okay now we next power we will take we will take the combination of them that's very interesting combination of them. so this onwards now onwards we will move into more kind of those solutions those solutions which is particularly a uh, volatile non volatile that kind of that means now we will now what we know till now that how to determine the concentrations now we will talk about the solvents solids part is over now we will talk about the solvents different nature of the solvent if you take a particular amount of the solute sol solute there in that solvent which has a particular characteristics what will happen those combinations we will talk okay and first then we will start the preparation then we will directly finally after the ideal solution non ideal solution we will go to the straight towards the solidity properties okay so till now just uh, go through any book you have hmm. and this is a very really important concept just and do some numerical problems also in the exercise okay.